This week, we spend way too much time crawling around under the van as we try to install our LPG underslung tank. So stay tuned to see how we get along. As we're going to be underslinging our gas tank, the first thing to do is give it a good coating of this underbody seal here, which should hopefully help protect it against any stones and chips as we're driving. The underbody spray says to cover up any plastic areas first, so that's what we're doing here. This stuff is super sticky and quite fumey, so make sure you've got somewhere to leave it while it dries, and also definitely recommend wearing a mask with this one. Finished spraying the tank now. So just to explain, it's going to fill from this side, so we'll attach the filler hose onto there, and that will come down to our fill point, which we will be putting on the side of the van. And then on the other side, so we've got the electronically operated tank, so we've got a wire to wire up with a little switch at some point. And then from this side, it will come over to a regulator, and that's the point the pressure will be lowered before it comes inside the van. And that's probably about where we're going to stop this video, depending on how well it all goes. This is our little level gauge for our tank, so we can see how much LPG we've got left. We opted for one with an electronic display, which we're going to run the cables up for into the van later on. But for now, it just needs a few screws to attach it into the tank. We've just installed the old level gauge here, because the instruction said to do it before mounting it underneath. And apparently, if you gently roll the tank around, you should see it working. underneath where I'm drilling. <laughs> no, nope. okay. we through? Yeah, we're through. After we'd confirmed those initial holes had come up where we wanted, we enlarged them so we can fit the bolts through. We used a template to make sure the bolts were going to come up in a vaguely sensible place inside the van and that's what those little green marks are on the floor. We've drilled our holes up through the floor for our tank. We're now going to give it a quick test fit above and then we're going to take the tank underneath, give it a quick test fit underneath and... Uh, quick. Quick, quick. Quick. It'll be it's quick. Be super quick. Super quick and easy to do. Our test fits look pretty good, so we're on to fitting the actual tank. This thing is pretty heavy to lift up in this position, particularly under the tight confines of the van. So uh, an extra pair of hands probably wouldn't go amiss. On the bottom of these bolts, we're putting a little penny washer and a nylock locking nut so that hopefully that will stop it from ever undoing or coming loose. And here it is, bolted on to the underside of the van. We did have a few issues getting those locking nuts into place because there's not a lot of room to get the spanners in to do them up. So we chucked a bunch of sealant up there just to be safe. This morning, we're going to be installing the filler point for our LPG. Uh, these are the pieces we have. They came fully disassembled, so we've had to kind of figure out how they fit together. Um, we've got this piece here, which is the critical one, which actually has the threads that the filler will fill into, and that sits inside this white housing here. And then it has a lid that goes on the top to keep water and dust and everything out while we're driving around. And then on the back, you can see there's various screw holes here, and that's for this plate which goes onto the back to help everything get secured into place. There's a rubber washer that goes on to keep everything as watertight as possible and then finally this black housing goes on the back to finish everything off and keep everything in place. As you can see this thing slots together nice and easily and is just done up with a few screws. 
we've assembled it now, got the nuts tightened up on the back, and it is just worth noting that this uh, cap should come down out the bottom, and these two pins should be facing side to side, not up and down. It's time to drill yet more holes in the van. We're gonna drill about here, because this side, there's a chassis member underneath, so we wanna avoid that. And by going that side of it, it means our filler hose should also be somewhat protected from any road, road debris. Debris, that's the word. Road debris. Time to drill yet more holes in the van. So we're gonna drill a 70 mil hole about here. This side, there's a chassis member, so we definitely don't wanna drill around here. And by being that side, it also will protect our filler hose from any road debris kicked up by the tyres, so that should be quite a good place. As you can sort of see here, the sills are double skinned, so we actually had to drill two holes, one from the outside and one from the inside, and uh, you just need to be a bit careful to make sure they're lined up properly. Once they were cut, we filed off all the rough edges and then gave them a touch of paint just to make sure they wouldn't rust. I've uh, got my hand stuck to the hole because when we cut these, they created a whole load of metal schwarf, which is obviously now sitting inside in those sills. So we're trying to uh, pull those out with a magnet. So I've got one of these magnets on the other side. And uh, if you look over to my right, you can see the two magnets worth I've already done. And uh, there's still plenty in here. It's going to be a bit awkward to reach when we're in there, so we're going to do up the filler hose now. Once the hose is on nice and secure, we're going to chuck a bunch of sealant around the filler cap just to keep out any water or mud or anything like that. Then it's simply a case of feeding that hose through and popping the filler point into place. And making sure it's lined up straight. Although we used some sealant, that was more for the sake of waterproofing it rather than fixing it to the van. For that, there's a set of screws that just go into the back. And here it is. You can see we've uh, actually driven the van since installing this and it was quite wet and muddy. So uh, not looking at its freshest, but still on there, nice and firm. And it looks like the filler cap is doing its job because it looks nice and clean inside, unlike the outside. The final thing we did with the filler point is to run the hose up into the tank and then secure it into place with some of these little clips, which we've just sprayed with some wax oil to protect them. Now that we can get gas into our tank, we are moving on to look at the other side. And the first thing we've got off the tank here is our regulator. Now this basically takes that high pressured gas from the tank and transforms it down to a usable pressure. We're attaching it to one of the main supports underneath the van and it just takes a couple of screws. After that, we've run some wires up from the tank. So if you remember earlier, we said we were going to have an electronic level gauge. So one of those cables is for that. And the other one is for our electric solenoid, which will let us turn our gas on and off when we're driving versus parked up. We've just finished wiring up our solenoid here. So in a sec, we'll get Aisha to flip the switch inside the van and it should make a noise. Okay, when you're ready. All the wiring is now done. So our level indicator had a green and a black on it and the black one runs around the back and up to this earth point here, which we have connected another cable to from the indicator inside. And then the cable for the on off for the solenoid and the green cable both got this bigger conduit and go inside the van. Up in our electrical cupboard we've wired up a switch to turn the gas on and off and we've got our level indicator there. On the table in front of me here is our next piece of safety equipment so it's a gas alarm and we've got an extra monitor and this alarm can do LPG, noxious gases, and carbon monoxide and so we're going to mount this at high level and this additional sensor is going to be mounted at low level and that way if there's any carbon monoxide or any LPG leaks hopefully we'll get alerted. That's all we've got time for this week but stay tuned to see us hook up our LPG appliances in a future video.